Welcome back to another edition of the Post Media Senators panel. I'm Bruce Garriock of Post Media in Ottawa. I'm with former citizen columnist and uh, contributor to Sportsnet.ca, Wayne Scanlon, and our national hockey columnist, Michael Trakos in Toronto. Guys, uh, let's start with the uh, NHL draft yesterday. The Senators made 10 selections, but I think most of the fir- focus, guys, is on that uh, those first two picks in the first round, Tim Stutzla and uh, Jake Sanderson. Mike, let's start with you. Just your thoughts on, on how they did on night one. And, and, and you know, I think the rest is we'll never know about, but let's start with those two guys. Well, you know, I, I thought it was a, a really productive really two days for the Ottawa Senators. Let's be honest. Uh, it was a hard one to screw up. Um, they got the third overall pick. They didn't go crazy off the board like uh, Columbus did. They didn't get anyone kind of searching uh, hockey DB looking uh, at who this guy was. Tim Stutzla was the next best option. And I thought Jake Sanderson at number five was, you know, they got arguably the best defenseman available in the draft. We'll, we'll see if him or Jamie Drysdale end up being the best defenseman. But, you know, they got a guy who in Stutzla looks like their number one center for many years to come. And their left side is now loaded uh, with Thomas Shabbat, Eric Branscombe, and now Jake Sanderson. So um, the 28th overall pick, you know, that's always sort of a crapshoot. But uh, when you get two building block uh, pieces and you can add them to a core that already includes Shabbat and Brady Kachuk and now Matt Murray, well, you've got the, the pieces there to go forward. Wayne, your, your thoughts? Yeah, no, I, I would agree with that, Mike. I think you, you put it really well. In, in a way, they couldn't screw up having two picks in the top five in such a deep draft. But uh, Stutzla, I think, is a guy, uh, guys that can step in pretty quickly. He's been playing against men in the German Hockey League. Uh, he's a, a little bit cocky, which I think you like in a scorer and very confident. And uh, Jake Sanderson, it sounds like he's going to need a year. He's going to, of course, play at the University of North Dakota where all the other senators prospects live <laughs> but you know I, I heard i heard craig button talking about him saying he thinks this guy might need not just one year but two and and i think that's okay because they've they've got a lot of defensemen in the system uh including jacob bernard docker uh, out of und who, who might be just a, a little bit farther along in his progress but uh jake sanderson a really solid uh all-around defenseman uh he's got a little bit of offensive upside i think and so, yeah, foundation pieces up front and on defense, and, and you can't beat that. You know, I, I also thought they scored big on draft night, and everybody put up your hand if you were surprised with the with the Alex Trebek making the first pick. I, I, I <laughs> really thought, I, I really thought that I, I really thought that was excellent. I really thought that the organization showed it could have some fun. They kicked off uh, day two of the draft by making a big trade, sending that 50-second pick and prospect Jonathan Gruden to the Pittsburgh Penguins for goaltender Matt Murray. Wayne, we'll start with you on this one. I think they're looking – I don't want to call Matt Murray a stopgap. I think they're looking for someone who can solidify that net for three years till some of these kids are ready. What do you think – Get what message do you think getting Matt Murray sends? You know what? I think it sends a great message, not only to the team, but also to the fan base. Uh, This is a team that's known for letting veterans go, and it's all about the kids. But here's a guy, a two-time Stanley Cup champion, who's going to come and and anchor things. He's going to step in and and pick up where Craig Anderson left off. I mean, you know, Bruce, you know Craig very well. The last couple of years, he he was kind of a – kind of kept to himself for, for a while early in the organization became a huge leader and, and the yeah. backbone of this team and a mentor for the younger goalies. And I think that's, that's going to be a, a really nice role and a different role, I think, for Matt Murray coming away from that veteran team in Pittsburgh to really provide stability and support for a very young team. And as you mentioned, uh, Bruce, a lot of young goalies in the system. Mike, uh, do you think uh, – I kind of think a little bit, and, and I, I don't know how much of a player they were in this – do you think the Leafs kind of feel like they let one get away by Ottawa getting Matt Murray? You know what, Bruce? I was always puzzled by the Matt Murray to the Toronto rumors. Um, I didn't understand it. The guy's only 26 years old. He's the same age as Frederick Anderson. Um, basically the same upside as Anderson, uh, except he's already proven that he can win a Stanley Cup or two. 
Um, the thing about Matt Murray is, you know, I don't know what the contract's going to be for his extension, but it's probably going to be around the same amount that the Leafs are already paying Frederick Anderson. So it didn't make any sense. Um, I don't see him as an upgrade over Anderson. I think he's everything that Ottawa needs. If you're going with a young group that really is all 25 years or younger, uh, why not get another, why not have a goalie that can grow with that group? And um, I really don't think we've seen the best of Matt Murray. Uh, injuries plagued them this year. Uh, obviously, uh, Pittsburgh's defense didn't really help him out, but I still think he's got a lot uh, more to show. And you know what? In a perfect scenario, it's not just Murray and Nett. You're going to have another guy sort of battling with them the same way that he did with Marc-Andre Fleury a couple years ago and with Tristan Yari last year. Um, so we'll see if Philip Gustafson can grow into that role in years to come, or even a Mad Sogard. Uh, but right now, um, you know, Ottawa, I, I still think they're, they're thinking a year uh, away. And, you know, when the, start, when the pieces start coming together, when Sanderson's in the lineup, when Stutzla is not just kind of getting his feet wet, but is an actual impact player, having a goalie who's going to be 27, 28 at that time is just a perfect scenario for the Senators. Well, and, and I also think it, it, it sends a proper message to the fan base in, in going out and getting a guy with this kind of resume, a, a two-time Stanley Cup champion. Mike, do, do you agree on that point? Oh, 100%. There's still, you know, this is going to be a trying year for Ottawa. I, I don't know if they're really going to be able to challenge for a playoff spot, but they should be a lot more competitive. I'd be shocked if they're in the bottom three or bottom five again this year. Um, a, a lot of that's going to depend on what Pierre Dorian does in free agency. Um, if he can get some veterans to kind of help, you know, shoulder the load. I don't think you want Tim Stutzla uh, really thrust into a number one center spot uh, right off the hop. So um, I, I'm kind of curious to see like the Anthony declare, um, RFA stuff that happened yesterday really took me by surprise. I thought that he was another guy that you'd really want to have around. And if you're going to lose some veterans like they did already in free agency with Borowicki and uh, Bobby Ryan, you're going to have to replace those guys. And not having a, a Pajot also hurts them. So but let's see if they're willing to spend some money in free agency. If they're not, it's going to be a tough year, whether you have Murray in that or if you have, you know, uh, Carey Price in that. So uh, I'm really kind of curious to see what the next week bring, kind of brings for Ottawa. Well, and that's where I was going next, Wayne, is is the Anthony Declare's departure uh, yesterday. I think it, it caught all of us off guard. Clearly something happened in those negotiations. There is there is some talk that the Senators did offer to to uh, double Anthony Declare's salary to $3.3 million. He, I don't know what he would have gotten if he filed for arbitration. Um, the walkaway number was 4.5. Maybe the Senators didn't think he was going to get there from an arbitrator. But that one is is a bit of a surprise, I, I think, on both sides. Oh, absolutely. And I'm, I'm also surprised that here's a player representing himself in these negotiations. I mean, that's why you have an agent. Uh, things can get a, a, a little bit nasty. It, it's better just to stay out of the fray. And, and let the agent, you know, deal with that stuff. And, and I think maybe it got a little bit personal and maybe he had his feelings hurt and decided to walk away. I think it's unfortunate, but this is a team, guys, with a, a lot of forward prospects. And, you know, I don't think they wanted to blow the bank uh, on keeping Anthony Duclair. He, he had a wonderful start to the season, made the all-star team to represent Ottawa. He was also kind of went in the tank in January and February and early March and had a terrible slump. So, you, you know, I, I think when you consider all the stops that he had before getting here, that I think there, there's a, a little bit of uncertainty still around this player. And I'm, I'm not totally shocked, I guess, now that you, you have a day to think about it, that they moved on and, and thought about, you know, creating room for the young guys. But if we're going to talk about free agency, I do think they have holes both at forward and defense and need some stability with some veterans. Yeah, and, and, and I don't think that the possibility of bringing back Ron Ainsey has been ruled out. And that, that was my next subject, uh, Michael, is free agency. And, and obviously, Anthony DeClaire is going to test that free agent market. There's so much uncertain with this league, uncertainty, pardon me, with this league financially right now. What should we expect Friday at noon when free agency opens up? 
I, I honestly don't know, Bruce. Uh, I'm I'm shocked at the the amount of RFAs that didn't get qualifying offers. I'm also kind of surprised that um, so many teams are looking to shed salary. Or maybe I shouldn't say surprised. It, it is a flat salary cap, and you're looking at a lot of owners who, frankly, lost a ton of money, uh, Ottawa included. The good news, if you're Ottawa, is that you're one of the teams that can take on bad salaries or bad sa- uh, um cap hits um, and really kind of take a player uh, or a draft pick along with it. And we'll see how creative Pierre Dorian is going to be. But, you know, if, if they want to get busy and they want to get some players, they, they can get some. It's just a matter of, you know, does the ownership really want to spend the money now when we're talking about an Ottawa team that's probably maybe another year, maybe two years out from being a playoff contender. It's, it's interesting to see. And I'm with you looking at that AHL team. Like they, they took strides this year. Um, you had three scorers in the top seven um, in league scoring in the AHL. So you want to give those guys jobs or at least create some opportunities. But at the same time, you know, like Edmonton showed that if you don't have the veterans there for those players to lean on or Buffalo also showed that, then, then it's a tough go for those guys. You, you need to find uh, what Toronto did when they had Patrick Marlowe and they had a James Van Riemsdyk or a Nazem Kadri. You, you need some guys where, it's not just the young guys leaning on and being leaned on night after night. So uh, I think it's really prudent for Dorian to kind of be somewhat active in free agency. At the same time, he can't be giving out crazy contracts because, you know, it's not going to be long before Kachuk needs a salary, uh, another uh, contract. And some of these other guys are going to be looking to get paid. Uh, Wayne, we'll, we'll wrap with you just on free agency. I think you, you asked Pierre in one of the conference calls earlier this week, if, if he expected to be active, they they need a forward. They need a defenseman. I know from speaking to other teams that Pierre Dorian was very active working the phones, trying to move some of those draft picks for players. He obviously did with Matt Murray. Um, do you think that leaves him maybe signing a couple of free agents a little before we wrap here? I, I do think so. Uh, it'd be interesting to see if that's on day one or if he sits back and is a little more patient. I, I really think it's a buyer's market. We, we think about this league literally being in a bubble. But, you know, they're not in a bubble when it comes to finances. And they're, they're just as vulnerable as any other business. And as we know, a lot of businesses are hurting right now. There have been no revenues coming in, uh, not since March. Uh, it's pretty hard to sell tickets. We don't even know when the, the next season is going to start. So uh, I think a lot of teams are hurting. And, and we know Ottawa doesn't have a ton of money. But I think they can be prudent. They've got the cap space. They can sit back a little bit and maybe – couple of days into free agency, uh, you might see a, a really good bargain come up and uh, Pierre Dorian will be there to grab him. Well, I appreciate your time today. Uh, Wayne Scanlon of Sportsnet.ca, former citizen columnist, and Michael Trakos, the national columnist for Post Media Hockey. I'm Bruce Garriock in Ottawa. Thanks for watching the Senators panel. <laughs>